You're having a good year. 2015, pretty good so far. Yeah. Because you're not only directing a hit movie, showing that it can be done. A woman can direct a movie. Yes. And kill it. <laughs> nail I wasn't it. the only one to do that this year, actually. No, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. But you, I think you had the biggest opener. I had the biggest opener for a first-time director, yeah, for sure. So. so what are you doing right? I mean, this is also an extremely very precise, very well-executed performance. Thank you. And did you did you make some kind of, I mean, has this all been a sustained, slow, it's organic no plans. growth? No plans. <laughs> Zero plans. <laughs> when I made this film, I made this film before I made Pitch Perfect 2, and, and, um, and I give credit to Bill Polad, who um, helped usher me into the director's chair. He was very encouraging and sort of said, like, you, 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 you have it, you'll be okay. Um, which was great, but, you know, this project, um, it took me, I was very seduced by the script, I thought it was very ambitious, you know, as someone who reads a lot of scripts, a lot of the same thing, a lot of the same kinds of roles all the time, you know, there, there was so much meat on the bone here, and, you know, and then it's all true, and the real people are involved, and we have all the music, so... You know, there's like an emotional connection to it immediately, and uh, and then I met Melinda. And when I met Melinda, I was you know, my fear about participating dissipated. It didn't entirely go away. It never does. But um, I met her. She, she's. I met her up at Sundance did with you? Brian. Yeah. When they first sort of made that come. What was it? A documentary? It was a. It was a. And he performed up there. Mm -hmm. And when you meet them. Yeah. Of course, you see immediately that she's very strong, and she's yes. very caretaking, and he's very fragile. Yes. And very brilliant. Um, she is fierce and devoted, and they have created this beautiful life together. They have five kids, and they've got dogs running around. I've been to their home, and it's a beautiful, happy place, you know. And um, to, to then try to even have an understanding of what they went through to get to where they are, um, especially for him. And it's, I mean, it's such a story of surviving and, you know, to play, I just felt really compelled after meeting Linda to be part of this storytelling and part of this, you know, if I could get a little piece of this <laughs> legacy, you know, I mean so amazing to tell this story and to, to have Brian be celebrated again now in a renewed way and to really be seen for who he is I think is so strong and just so interesting and inspiring for everyone. But as someone you know better than, than I I mean I was going over your, your resume and you've been in a lot of movies big yeah, and small movies. Yeah. and as you say, this movie has a very organic, authentic quality to yeah. it. It is not glitzed up. It isn't prettied up. Mm -mm. And it, there's room in it for your character to show how that relationship developed. It's not like a romance. Their romance was very... Um, it was organic on one level. Uh, very organic. And then, you know, and also just... I mean, you, you talk about sort of the obstacles get, that get thrown at you. I mean, tons of obstacles. The great news for me as an actor, um, because there's so much nuance in this film, and the notion, you know, I, I had trouble, I would say, I had trouble with the notion of of falling in love with someone so damaged, you know, taking that on. And then you sort of look around and you go like, well, everybody's got shit, don't they? <laughs> you know, everybody's got baggage, don't they? And well, it's almost like she falls for him in spite of herself. She really does. I mean, she... But I will say, for an actor, you know, the gift for me was the thing I could so clearly play and latch onto, and it's something Melinda said to me immediately, was she hated Eugene Landy. I mean, she had despised that man. And she's competitive, and she wanted to win. You know, I said there's a moment in this movie where I, Bill and I talked a lot about this. There's a moment in this movie where Melinda sort of says, I don't know if ever we're going to have this grand love affair. I mean, I, I see it. I can feel it. I want to make it happen. I don't know if it's ever really going to happen. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of selfish. I'm just doing something for me. Um, but 
I can say with clarity that I do not want Eugene Landy to win. <laughs> I want I do I want that man out of this guy's life. I just you know she had his number from minute one. Well, what I, what I love about her is and the way you play her is that you get that double layer mm -hmm. where she's she's part of a culture where she behaves a certain way. She doesn't show her cards mm -hmm. to Landy. Mm -mm. She's she's playing it cool, and but you see how she feels. That's right. Um, she. She knew Landy, you know, she sold cars, and she, this other thing, I, I really... They know how, who people are. They know who people are, and they know how to read people, and I also think, uh, and you know when someone's playing you, and, and also she'd been play like, she was... She's a pretty woman. She'd been around the block, you know, with a lot of men, and she knew the game, and, you know, she'll, she'll tell you, I mean, she was dating professional athletes, and, you know, all kinds of people, and so to meet, you meet Brian, he's like this pure loving, sweet human being, totally truthful, no artifice, you know, like, so unique as a person, and then, you know, you listen, now you've met him, and you listen to the music, and it's like a whole different way of, of, you have an even deeper understanding of this person, there's even more to be sort of in love with and devoted to, and, you know, and the only, and, and, you know, yes, he's mentally ill, and he's got this baggage, but, like, he is unlike anyone that you've ever known. And that kind of person is worth, you know, working for. Um, you don't turn your back so easily on that kind of person when you're 38 years old. And you've been around a lot of blocks. And you believe in love. Like, you want love in your life, you know? Um, so I think Melinda, it's just, I, I, I like to say they saved... They saved each other, you know. I get a lot of credit for, like, well, you know, Melinda really saved his life. And, and, and absolutely, where he is right now, going out in the world and performing and everything, you know, she is just absolutely devoted to making sure he is as celebrated as possible while he's still alive um, and while he can get the feedback. You know, she said to me, in those years that he was not performing, it's not like the music went away. The, everyone heard the music. People loved the Beach Boys. The Beach Boys were out on tour without him getting, you know, being adored and, and, and all of it. And he was missing that feedback. He didn't know how much impact he was having. And so to be, you know, we went to the Toronto Film Festival. We showed this movie and people give him, literally, they're not going to stop standing up until, you know, Brian finally just was like, all right, guys, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to sit down. I mean, he, it's, that made this whole thing worth it because it was like, oh, right, the light is being shown on this couple, and they are inspiring and worthy of film and of people knowing their story. And I mean, it's well, really I mean, it's, special to be a part of it. It's a little bit like Theory of Everything in the yeah. sense that you have a two-hander. You know, it's, it's about the two of them. It's not just about him. Yeah. Which well, is unusual. The, first, the forward motion of... of uh, our part of the 80s part of the story is Melinda's and that absolutely as an actor you know, especially as an actress that was of course very um, exciting and compelling and, you know, and Bill was committed to it too. it wasn't like I didn't get into a situation where I was hoodwinked you know I knew that that she there was no other way I mean the Brian Wilson that she met was passive so you know the act, the act, the active, you know, the forward momentum of that section of the movie was going to be driven by Melinda, and that was very appealing to me. And Cusack is very good. He's he very is. moving. Yeah. I mean, having met the real man, he does capture. He doesn't look like him, but he captures something. You know, it really was about the essence. I think any time, we never want to do an impression. You know, it's like there's no, you don't want mimicry as an actor. It really is about finding someone's essence or, you know, what you can connect with, um, you know, I, I, and I don't, I don't think the real people, I mean, in my experience, the real people, I've played a few real people, you know, they don't, their expectation is not like a dead-on impression of them, that's not, that's not really what anyone wants. This is an artistic endeavor, and it, it, you know, we're especially here when we were working with Brian, who is such an amazing, out-of-the-box artist, um, we were we never felt hemmed in by the fact that you know he doesn't look like him. It's like okay, but when you meet Brian Wilson, there's such a sweet, 
sort of love, I mean, you know, you've met him, so it's just, there's, he's pure, you know, he's just pure, and I really felt like John, you know, who's such an intellectual, had to let go of so many things, he did such a great job of just kind of being an open vessel, you know, and that is Brian, I mean, and I think, the other thing, you know, because Paul and John, Dana and Cusack, they didn't really speak about how their portrayals or... It's uncanny. They, they didn't do anything. All they did was meet Brian and listen. They met the same man and listened to the same music, and they got the exact same impression because you can't really misinterpret Brian. Do you know what I mean? You can't really have... There isn't... There's not some interpretation that's like, well, I met, like, a really angry, you know, cerebral dude. It's like, no. He is a pure, open, sweet-natured, good-hearted, you know man like that's just who he is and so the two performances work you know work together so seamlessly because they were working off the the, the same essence and it's the essence that you know is so great so you have had this experience you've, you've directed this year mm-hmm. what are what is your outlook going forward in terms of what you're looking for and what you're you've been spoiled um you know i and you know, i got into directing because i felt like in producing because I, I felt like I had more to offer this business that wasn't asking very much of me and uh, you know I I like challenges and I'm a I like working I, I love what I, I love what I do I, I say you know John Cusack and I like to joke that like, we love going to movies you know someone said are you going to direct another movie I want to direct another movie because when I go to do that then I have like a total focus I don't want to do anything else it's like the best excuse to not deal with any of your real life (laughs) you know it's a big 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 job and a big challenge um but I you know I have so much going on all the time that I feel like when I can make a movie it's like oh okay guys I can't I can't read anything else I can't think about anything else I can't worry about where my career's going or who you know what aging or I, I you just don't you take all of that away and you just focus and I I, I love it. That's what I like about this job. So, anything coming up? Nothing that I can talk about. <laughs> no, nothing official. I'd like to see you do Pitch Perfect 3, too. Um, I might, you, you know? know. Nothing official. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, The Hunger Games is, is done. Yeah. It's done. I actually just did ADR, so oh. I'm like, done, done, done. Is that sad? You know, it was such a great part for you. Yeah, it was a great Effie. part. She's amazing. I miss her a lot. She, um, But I love that I still have November to sort of go and celebrate her again. And I haven't seen the movie yet, so I haven't seen Mockingjay yet, um, part two. Uh, they, you know, it was really sad when it happened, when we left. And then, and then you know, you get busy and you move on. I mean, it's how all, it's our life. That's what actors do. Um. I love that we have this reunion coming up where we'll get to see everyone again. I'm so excited because it, it's one of the, it's a real, I like this one. This one's a good one too. Everybody's in love with each other. Thank you very much. Sure, thank you.